Today I'm going to show you how to make a remote controlled robot in about five minutes. So first you need remote control. This is a two degree remote control. It's a very cheap one. So it has one degree this way and one degree going the other way. You could also get nicer remote controls like this guy. Uh, it has four degrees of freedom. So up and down here and also up and down here. You also notice these trims. I'll explain what the trims do later. Then you have uh, nicer ones like the six degree of freedom remote here. So four degrees of freedom here. You got your trims, and then other buttons and knobs to get your other degrees of freedom up there. Or you could get something even nicer than this analog remote, like a digital remote. It's pretty because it has blue light. Uh, it's also six degrees of freedom for here, buttons up here, knobs, and then other various options here. Now, after you have remote, you need a receiver. Uh, receiver, pretty much you plug in your servos here, you plug in your battery. It also tells you your frequency here, your frequency crystal. There are other receivers, like this guy, who claims to be the smallest, lightest receiver in the world. I don't know about that. But you plug in your servos and your battery here. So after you have your receiver, you need a robot. Now this robot, I just took a sheet of plastic like this, drilled four holes in it, then attached the servos to those four holes like this. Then I made my own custom wheel, took a servo horn right here, drilled it into the wheel. There you go. Now I also attached this sheet of Velcro here and another sheet of sticky Velcro here. So what you do next is you get a battery like this. This is a six degree, six volt battery, 1800 milliamp hours. You just stick it onto the Velcro there because I have Velcro on the battery already. Then you get your receiver. You just stick it on like so. Then you attach your servos. So I'm attaching the right servo to channel number one. You pretty much do it to whatever channel you want. Depends on how you want your setup to be. Then the left servo into channel number two. Then the battery up at the top. Attach that in. Now you see all these wires just dangling around? So what you do is you get a twist tie, like so. You grab all your wires, twist all your wires together, like so. Uh, twist it on. Now you just want to make sure the wires don't get tangled up in the weir wheels when the robot moves. So we have a robot built and wired up. So then we get our analog remote like so. Turn it on. Now, so we have right, turn left, go forward. Go ahead and reverse, just so you can see that better. Reverse, forward, spin left, spin right, reverse. So you can get whatever kind of motion you want. There you have it, remote controlled robot in like five minutes. Now there are other features on the remote controls. First feature I'm going to teach you about is trims. Uh, so you turn it on, you notice your power meter right here says you have this much power. Now if you look at the robot, you'll see it's slowly rotating. That means the trim is off, right? So you go to your trim here and you move it. So if I go all the way this way, it spins a lot. Or if I go the other way, it's slowly spinning the other way. So basically you move your trim just to the point where that server stops moving. And you can also do it to the other end so if I go too high this way, it rotates that way. If I go too low, it rotates the other way. So I slowly move it to when the server just stops moving. All right. 
There's also something called servo reversing. So you open up your remote and you'll see these uh, buttons here. These are basically to reverse the channels. So forward will be reverse and reverse will be forward. And you could reverse or make forward each of the channels just by doing that. And this is the battery right here. It's a, usually a NICAD. Uh, but what's bad about the analog is you could accidentally knock it or bump it with your hands just by accident. And so what I like about the digital remotes is that the trims are just buttons. So I could just push the button and you can see the trim is changing. Or I could trim it back down. It's much more accurate. It's much nicer. And there are other various features. You could edit the trim. There's a little cursor you can move around. Inside every remote is a frequency crystal. This one's for channel 73 at 75.65 megahertz. If you ever wanted to change the frequency, you just pull that out. You have a crystal in here. Swap the crystal. It's not polarized, so you can put it in reverse. And then you put it back in. And your frequency's changed. There are other frequencies like 72.13 megahertz, and you pull it out the same way. And my digital remote has more of an RF module. You squeeze both ends here, pulls out like this. Now on the receivers, uh, you'll have the same thing. So this one has a little rubber protective covering. And then you can see the crystal here. It tells you your frequency on the crystal like so. And the smaller one doesn't even have a rubber protector. Just the crystal here, you just pull it out to swap it. Now to see the inside of a remote, you just hack it open like this. Now you can see the frequency crystal here. You can swap that out. You also see reversing buttons like this. You see your processing unit here. And you also see the joystick. So the joystick here. And you can see it moving these things here. And what these are doing is it's rotating these potentiometers here and it sends a signal to the processing unit and that's how it knows how you're rotating the joystick. So if you have an old remote, lots of good stuff to take out if you don't need it anymore. And that concludes the remote control tutorial. Thank you.